we need to find the inherent flaw in the argument. This last sentence here is the conclusion of the argument. See, the premise here mentions that higher education leads to a drop in birth rate. But this does not mean that higher education is the only factor that leads to a decline in birth rates. There may be other factors. So it's not that if one country has lower birth rates, it is bound to have higher education. This argument suffers from the classic GMAT error of confusing possibility with necessity. There may be other factors involved. And answer choice A hits the nail on its head by suggesting that the argument assumes one potential cause. See, higher education is one potential cause. There may be other factors as well. And if for the other factors, the conditions are inferior here, then the conclusion cannot be reached. It's like saying people who have higher IQ are on average more successful. Now A is more successful than B, therefore A must have higher IQ. No, this cannot be established because in making a person successful, there are many factors. IQ is only one of them. It is possible that B has higher IQ, but A is better on a lot of other parameters. EQ, for example. So A is going to be the correct answer choice. No, the argument does not present any information that is inconsistent with evidence put forward. No, the conclusion it offers is not merely a paraphrase of one of the pieces of information. There is a bit of reasoning involved here. However flawed, the reasoning is involved there. It's not the case of a mere paraphrasing of a premise. Answer choice D is a trap. This is a fancy looking answer choice. Sometimes such complicated sounding answer choices are the most difficult to handle because it's difficult to process what is going on. It's not a matter of before or after. No chronology has been mentioned in the argument. The argument simply talks about the correlation. It doesn't talk about a before-after phenomenon. The argument does not make any distinction and it does not assume the truth of the conclusion that it is trying to establish. That would be the case of circular reasoning. There is no circular reasoning involved here. It is the problem of confusing a possibility with a necessity. The problem of confusing one condition with the only condition. A is the correct answer choice here. In case you selected any other answer choice, the bigger question that you need to answer is why did you eliminate answer choice A? Selecting one of the other answer choices is understandable because some of the answer choices are very complex and you may not be able to process them properly. Remember, in all of the verbal section, it is not about selecting one answer choice, it is about eliminating four answer choices. An answer choice that you cannot eliminate is the correct answer choice. Choice A is so good, it cannot be eliminated. And if you chose any of the other four answer choices, you are probably caught in the vocabulary, which is understandable, but you should never eliminate the correct answer choice without proper reasoning. A is the correct answer choice.